Now is the time to worship the creator of heaven and earth. Now is the time to glorify his name. Now is the time to sing our hearts out. Now is the time to surrender everything and worship the one and only God. Morning, everyone. Glad you guys are all here this morning. For you that like change, congratulations. For you that are struggling, it's okay. God is still here, and he will still meet us here, even at tables. So uh, let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are the same, even as our surroundings change, even as our circumstances change, our lives change. God, you remain the same, and we thank you for that. We thank you that because you are constant, you can be trusted. You can be looked to. You can be worshiped. Lord, we take this time right now to give you the worship that you deserve. Through our, through our singing, through our studying of your word, through us loving others as you have loved us. Lord, we pray that you'll be glorified, that you will increase and that we will decrease. Lord, may we be changed because we have spent time in your presence today. May we be a cl just a step closer to, to holiness, a step closer to being like our Jesus. But Lord, we fully recognize that we fall short constantly. So thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you loved us and you died for us in the midst of our sins. We love you, Lord, and we seek for our lives to display that. We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. In a little bit different change, um, Alex and Estera, they're going to come up and light our Advent candle for this week. So today's um, candle is joy. Um, for Christians, the coming of Christ is the reason uh, for joy. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all people. Today our Savior is born in the city of David. He is the Christ. Joy is not a, a fleeting feeling or a mood. In Christ, joy is an attitude of the heart. Um, and Jesus tells his disciples, I have told you these things so you may, um, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Joy, um, it also is not dependent on the circumstance. Um, Apostle Paul wrote a whole letter that's called the letter of joy from prison. And he says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the help of uh, the spirit of Jesus Christ. And um, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. One of the purple. This, I think this was last time, right? You have to do two? Okay, that's from last time. The light. <laughs> oh, yes, even. We like even. Yes, symmetric. Mm. Thank you. Would you stand as we begin to sing?
partying at the church last night. <laughs> It's so good to be here, and Christmas, celebrating Christmas is in full swing here at Lighthouse. And as a way of worshiping, 
uh, if you've been, if you call Lighthouse home, you know that this is what we do. As an act of worship, we take time to give to the Lord. We take our offering during worship because we believe that it's an act of worship. That we give cheerfully from our hearts, willingly from what God has already given us. So let's pray that God would bless. Father, we come before you right now. We acknowledge, Lord, that all that we have is yours. All that we have is from you. So we give back to you right now out of what you have given us. We give cheerfully and wi willingly. Thank you, Lord, that your faithfulness is proved over and over. You are our great provider, and we have enough. Will you point out to us those that are in need that we could supply their need, that you would supply it through us. We pray that you would take this offering, Lord, and use it, multiply it, to reach this neighborhood and this city and this region with your gospel, with your love, and to advance the mission and the ministries you've called us to here. We pray for your blessing over this offering. In Jesus' name, amen.
see your communion elements at your tables and sometimes they're tricky so you can go ahead and try to unwrap them right now when we take communion together we're acknowledging that the Lord has come and that he's coming back we're acknowledging that we believe not by ceremony, not by just tradition, that we believe that there's a reminder to us that Jesus has paid for our sins completely, that he gave his life for us, that because he lives, we live. And that's not something to take lightly. So as we take the elements together, come before the Lord. Remember him. Remember our Lord Jesus. And that this blood is the blood of a covenant that will last forever because Jesus is the one who is the both the promise and the promise keeper. He holds that promise secure for us. Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. What a beautiful promise that Jesus is looking forward to drinking it anew with us in his kingdom one day together. The bread element is on the bottom, in case you were wondering. <laughs> the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you is too soft of a word. We know that you saved us, and because of you, we have life. Our hope is fully in you, not just in this life, but more importantly, it for eternal life. You are our Lord. We love you, and we're here for you, and this church belongs to you. We say this in your
we thank you for this incredible plan of the Messiah coming, the incredible love that you have for the world that you created. God, that you would send your one and only son to die. God, we thank you for the system of justice that you have set up. God, and then all we have to do is come to you just as we are with all of our failures and our flaws. And you say, come to me with open arms and you will forgive us. We thank you. We love you. We thank you for this church. Pray over this message. God, would you just calm our minds and the things and the distractions of the season and of our lives. Just quiet those things, Lord, so that we hear exactly what we need to hear, each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Um, I would like to formally welcome you to Lighthouse. This is, if this is your first time here and you would like to know more about Lighthouse, we have welcome cards right out in the lobby. They're in a gray basket. You can fill it out and drop it right back in the basket, and somebody will be reaching out to you. Um, also, a reminder, if you have any prayer requests that we'd like to share with the prayer team, with the pastor, whatever, we would love for you to write that on the welcome card as well. Know that you'll be prayed for. I just wanted to highlight a few things in the bulletin. Um, if you were not here last week, you kind of missed a little show. So um, with me doing the announcements and really, anyways. So I wanted to let you know that we have it dialed in. So I wanted to um, remind you or mention a few things. One, um, Oasis, which is the third Thursday of every month, this week, this week we have decided, or this month we have decided to cancel it. Um, it's just, it, we, we're doing a lot, and we would love for you to be able to spend time with your family. So know that we will pick that up back up the third Thursday in January. Um, also, this next Sunday, on the, eight, on the 18th, um, we, uh, for those that are, well, you can read more about it, but I rec we recognize that the holidays are tough for some people, and we want to be able to honor that. And so at 4 o'clock next Sunday, we're going to have a, a special time with David Howell. He'll probably share more when he comes. Is it two Sundays? It's the 18th. Yeah, it's two Sundays. Yeah. Sorry. Dang, I thought I had it dialed in this week. Oh, God always uses this time to remind me that I'm fallible. Okay, so in two weeks, the 18th, the date is correct on the bulletin at 4 o'clock. If you'd like to know more about it, um, please reach out to David Howell. His contact is on the bulletin. As well as our Christmas Eve service. Turn up your hearing aids, people. It will be on Christmas Eve, the 24th. 24th at 5 o'clock. It is a candlelight service. It is family friendly. We would encourage you to bring your entire family. Um, we try to keep it to an hour so that you, it does not, I don't want it to say it distracts from your family time because it is definitely a vital part of the family time. We recognize, but we also recognize that there's 24 hours in the day. So we will keep, we, that will be at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. And then the next day is Sunday, Christmas Day. So we will also be having church the next day at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. If you show up at 1030, that's fine. We will have cookies and coffee, but we will start the service at 11. So those are a few things. Um, also, uh, we have a yearly tradition here. We do a uh, uh, New Year's Eve service. No, not a New I'm sorry. New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Hello. And it's at 6 o'clock. It's very casual. Um, we play games. We often do karaoke. We hang out. And then at 9 o'clock, we welcome in a new West East Coast New Year's, 9 o'clock. And then you go home and you go to bed. It's beautiful. <laughs> so it's also very kid-friendly. So come at 9 o'clock. We'll welcome in 2023. And then it will be just a great time after that. So that is all. Okay, thank you. So now I would love to bring up David and Eric, both of them. They're going to... Okay, just David. This David, David Howell, he's just going to share with us for uh, just a 90 seconds of what God is doing. So, David, come. David Howell, come. Hey. So, I had a service yesterday, and, you know, I was thinking as the music was happening, it's so beautiful, the music, but the guitarist was so moved that he couldn't, he stopped. He stopped. And he said, you know... We're singing these songs, but I want you to know that it's hard for me to sing them because I used to sing them with my wife. She used to lead them. And so it was really moving, so moving that the chaplains, they couldn't get up and share when it came time for the ornaments. So do know that, you know, this is a season where if we're remembering somebody, 
it's hard to see that empty seat at the table. It really is. And um, one of the things that we affirm is that, you know, we don't have to give up the ones that we love. We can remember them always. And yes, life will surround us and change, but they are always a part of us. They're always a part of us. So I have a prayer, and it's called Walking with Grief. And it goes like this. Do not hurry as you walk with grief. It does not help the journey. Walk slowly, pausing often. Do not hurry as you walk with grief. Do not be disturbed by the memories that come unbidden. Swiftly forgive and let Christ speak for you. Unspoken words, unfinished conversations will be resolved in him. Do not be disturbed. Be gentle with the one who walks in grief. If it is you, be gentle with yourself. Swiftly forgive, walk slowly, pausing often. Take time, be gentle as you walk with grief. So I hope you can join us on May 18th. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, David. So yeah, on the 18th, uh, if, you're, if you know someone or you're that person that um, is missing a loved one uh, during the holidays and you feel it the 18th at 4 o'clock right here, and don't miss out on it. It's going to be a beautiful, special time. Okay, kids, you are dismissed to your classes, and, um, and you are all dismissed to 90 seconds of greeting each other at your tables or just get up and say hi to somebody you haven't said hi to yet. As you might know or might be deducing that uh, we don't normally sit like this, right? You remember last week we had rows? We're going to return to that next week, but uh, many of us were here last night having a great time with our Christmas cafe, our... our live entertainment headed out of the park and it was great to see kids having a blast at the end we had a a family kid-friendly uh, jam session right where all the kids were given instruments and they just went after it and it was a blast and that's why we have a little extra hospitality this morning somebody said why don't we do that every morning and um and if you're in that camp you're thinking why can't we have this much food out every morning sure go for it Go for it. You are welcome uh, to, to do that. Also, doesn't it feel like being at tables like this with white linens, we should be having breakfast? Yeah, yeah if anybody wants to order, I'll go long. I'll go long and wait to, for the food to get here. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think most of you know me, but for those of you who don't, my name is Rosendo, and I get to be the pastor around here and get to lead with a bunch of other ministry leaders, which is everybody that you see. I love that here, and we're all family, and everybody has a part in what God is doing. We're going through a series called Light of the World, the light of the world, and we're focusing on the the Advent themes of hope, joy, love, and and peace, and as we consider joy today, I'm so glad that uh, that, uh, David came up to share about the heaviness or the, the, the hardness the difficulty that is at this time of year. I I believe that we're going to see this morning that there is joy even in lament. There's joy even in difficulty because joy is different than just happiness, right? And it's more than just things are better. It's that things are good. So as we get into today, let's consider what our expectations are of Christmas. What are our expectations of the Christmas season? And I believe as we dive into God's word that the Holy Spirit is going to be doing a work in conquering our expectations. The, those expectations that maybe lead to disappointment or lead to a distance between what we think the season should be like and what we're experiencing. Let's pray for the reading of God's word. Father, thank you that you have a plan this morning, that you have a word to speak to us. We pray, Lord, as we give you our full attention Uh, that you would speak to us just what we need to hear. Open our ears, open our eyes to hear from you, to see you, that we would each leave here having heard from you and having received from you just what we need. We give you all of our attention and all of our heart right now in in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, yeah, so sometimes we, we set up expectations. We want things to be the way that we want them to be. And we see that other people 
especially on TV, are having the time of their lives during Christmas. And we don't feel like we're a part of that, but we want to have some of that, right? And we try to force it. Kind of like this video uh, coming up. It shows an example of somebody feeling like they're on, on the outside of society a little bit, but trying to force the Christmas spirit. Maybe this has been you. Go for it. <laughs> All right, so that was, just, that was just for fun, but sometimes we have had that experience in Christmas where it just didn't pan out the way it was. I, I can tell you that in my, <laughs> in my life, you know, I, I grew up, this is what Christmas was like for me growing up, uh, some church traditions. I grew up Catholic, so there's uh, a lot of that. There's also what I watched on TV, all the little cartoons, and in my family, we didn't talk about Christmas very much, so Christmas was whatever it looked like, the, the, the lights and the warmth on, on TV. And I always imagined something like that would, would come about in my life one day. I remember that, that feeling at, as a kid. And then later on, going into adulthood, I had one Christmas after the other where there was loss, whether somebody died or I went through, three times in my life, I went through a, a rough breakup where the person I thought I was gonna marry um, said no around Christmas time. And, and so, yeah, it shows you that I had a great track record, bad picker, I had a bad picker. Um, I only had to do it right once, yes. Yeah, um, anyway, but I remember so many times, and, and this is after knowing Jesus and walking with him, coming to a time of Christmas where everybody seems to be celebrating, and there was also a time where I was single for the longest time while my other siblings had, were married and had kids, and so, of course, I'd always be the designated photographer. And that would always feel good uh, during Christmas uh, time, too. But somewhere in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of the expectations and the emotions, there was a quiet time that I would have with the Lord. A quiet time with Him, away from everybody else. A quiet time with Him that was, it seemed to almost be so silent, somewhat and in, his, in those silent times, the Christmas made the most sense. It made sense in the way that when Jesus came into this world, it wasn't through anybody's expectations, and it was distant from any formalized celebration, but it was right in the midst of dark places where God's light shone bright. And in those quiet places that I had where things just didn't make sense, that's where the love of God seem to shine most brightly. And that's what we're called to as a church as well, to let his light in us continue to reflect and to shine in so many else's, somebody else's life, in our families, wherever we are, to just let his light shine. And we'll look into that. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, we read in the very first uh, verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I have rarely given a message about Christmas or Christmas season at all using the Gospel of John. I love the other stuff. I'm, just a, I'm a traditionalist at heart. But this year, this really stood out to me as we is our theme for the, the month or, or the season is the light of Christ. We read here that Jesus was, is the word, was the word, was with God, and that he is the light of all mankind. 
scriptural truth, just from that passage. Let's just do a little quick Bible study. Jesus is the truth and the exact expression of thought and essence of God. Even when he was in the manger, light and life are found in Jesus. This is just scriptural truth, but enough to live life on. There's a lot of dark places and spaces in our lives in the world. In fact, somebody might comment that we live in a dark world. Things aren't the way they're supposed to be in many different ways. And if you really want to see that, just turn on any news outlet. The person of God includes a nature of with. I'm not too sure if I wrote that well, grammatically well, but let me explain that. The person of God, the person of God includes a nature of with. We read here, he, well first, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So if Jesus is the light and life of all mankind, he is the light and life of God, and we, and we understand that being God, this triune God is a nature of with, we need to understand that part of living life, real life, and having the light of God in our life is being with him and with each other. We are created in his image so that that longing to be with somebody, that's, that's from God. That longing to be with somebody in a healthy way. Okay? The problem with humanity, the problem with church that many people have is there's so many people there, and that's the issue. You're right? And yet, people in God's economy, in God's teaching, people aren't the problem. They're actually the training, okay? Because they teach us about grace. Sometimes how to exercise it, sometimes how to receive it, right? But with is the point. Dark places in our life is when we are without, alone, isolated, disconnected, in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of schemes and ways of the, of the world that cause that. And ultimately, when we're feeling distant from God, to whatever degree, there is darkness. And we say things like, we feel dark. We, it feels dark. And that's another way of saying, I feel like I'm, not, I'm out of touch with God. Out of touch with his love and his life. But when Jesus came into the world for the first time, immediately, just like that, there was real light in the world. Real light. Not just the light from God's word and his truth and his actions and his creation on display. Those are reflecting his light. But there was actual light. The light and life of God came into the world. What a beautiful thing. Because it was God saying, I'm going to be with you. He is God. He, he, we read that he is Emmanuel. God with us. Hold on to that. Don't be distracted by that the rest of this morning or the rest of this day or the rest of your life. Because everything comes back to God saying, I want to be with you and I want you to be with me. Do you know that there's a difference between, there's a difference between the omnipresence of God, he is present everywhere. There's a difference between that, meaning he's present here, and being with him. One is much more relational, right? God is here in this place. It's the same way that you could be in a crowded room and feel all alone, right? And the same way you could be in the presence of God, in his glory, among his people, and yet not be with him. But he has done all that is needed to come to us that we, in turn, come to him. And so in those dark places where we feel lonely and struggling or challenged, lamenting a loss, the challenge isn't, how do I feel better? The challenge is, Lord, help me be with you right now. How? A few people have asked me lately, it's a question I asked too, how do, how do we make Christmas special? How do we make it about his joy? How do we escape all the commercialism of it and, and the high expectations of it? How do we actually, for once, celebrate Christmas? And I believe we're hearing this morning, it's about being with him. And not just with him alone, but with him with others. Being with others. Observing what he has done. Observing what he is doing. 
and celebrating the actual consequence, the consequences, the outcomes of him coming to earth. Just trusting that he'll do something with that observance, with that time with him. And yeah, go see all the pretty lights and all that. That's also fun. But being with him, that will bring joy. I think I've shared this story a few different times, but I love it, so I'll share it again. Okay, I married into a cat, an awesome cat. Her name's Gwynny. She's great. She, uh, I love her. But the first time I had, uh, first few weeks, first few years, really, of being married with her, I had to learn her, okay? And I, I learned right away that um, she doesn't understand English at all, nothing at all. And if, I also learned eventually, even if she did, it wouldn't matter to her. She would do what she wants, and that's that. And but she, she, we needed to give her treatment uh, for, for, I don't know, cats get treatment for something or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> fleas or whatnot. Okay, all I know is we got to take it to the vet every now and then. I don't know why that needs to be in the budget, but it, it, it matters. It does matter. She, I love her, babe. I do. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so there... So we're trying to give her this treatment, and as soon as she sees us walking toward her, we're not going to give her a shot. It's just a little liquid that goes on her. But as soon as she sees us, she makes a beeline, she runs away. She's, it's something that's outside of her will. But we, we found, finally found a way to corner her into the bathroom and, and make her suffer by giving her treatment. And she's molting all over. She's meowing all over. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, what is your problem? We are helping you. If it wasn't for us, you'd be in such bad shape. Ah. We finally give her the treatment. We let her go. She runs away. We, looks at us like we're the worst people in the world. How could you do this to me? And, I, and anyway, getting to the point, there's this time where I saw her shrieking away after we helped her. And she's in this corner and she looks pitiful. And I'm like, oh, you poor thing. Don't you know, I actually do like you. I like you. And I bet you, you like me too, deep down. She's learned to love me since. And I'm looking at her, and I'm like, there's zero way, there's actually no way for you to understand that I'm trying to help you. You just don't understand me at all. You're filled with suspicion and narcissism. Okay. What, a, what a combo there. But I love the way you purr. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you could purr, pet her a couple times. The third time, she'll scratch you. Okay. And I remember thinking to this, this beautiful cat, if only there was a way that you could understand that everything that we're trying to do is for your good. And, it's this, and I had this profound theological thought. The only way for this cat to understand is for me to become a cat. For me to become a cat and speak cat. So then I would become a cat, look at this cat and go, I don't need you. And that's the language of a cat. No, um, <laughs> but somehow this cat would understand that that it doesn't have to be suspicious, could I be one of them, right? And this new language is actually a language of care, of love. And that's what God did for us. He came to us in the most humble, approachable way. He said, I want to be with you. I'm going to spend, live a whole lifetime, a living life just like you, making all the decisions you wish you would have, living a perfect life for you, but I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to be with you in every way possible. He also experienced loss, loss of loved one. Even though he knew the outcome of eternal life, he, he lamented loss as, as well. He had people betray him. He had people say, I'm your friend, and then act unfriendly. People accuse him of wrong left and right. He had his closest friends leave him, abandon him when he needed him the most but he demonstrated the full heart and character of God, and that is with. Never once do we read about Jesus leaving his disciples, leaving his mission. He's always with us. And maybe there's some time starting this morning or at some place in your, in your quiet spaces where you can reflect on that and go, God, you have been with me always. Jesus, you're with me. I'm going to celebrate that. I want to help somebody else come into that reality as well. I want to I do gifts this year thinking about that. I want to do something this year acknowledging that, recognizing that you are with me, that you've done everything to be with me. And when I stray away from him, when I go sideways on him, he's still with me. And his grace brings me back. His sacrifice on the cross seals me with him forever. In fact, when we take communion, another way to give it that communion devotional is to say, this reminds us that he has sealed the with 
forever. We are forever with him by faith in what he has done for us. Mm. That's just the beginning of the message. I got it. <laughs> Use just the, I, just, I like looking at definitions. It used to say that people are things, are in a place together, or doing something together. Preposition is company. We're in God's company. What else? Somebody wants our company. Light. Look at the light. Jesus says these are light. God says these are light. The natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible, like the light of sun. Do you know that just like the sun, light exists when we don't see it. The light and the love of God exist even when we don't see it. Even when we're in a dark place, even when we're feeling lonely and hurting, his love is never gone, right? So the, the challenge isn't how do I feel better, it's how do I get to be with him into his light. Light is the life and love of God. Joy is the light of Jesus bursting in us. The life of God bursting in us. Think about a time where you've heard somebody say something about God or something that God did in their life, and it feels so good to hear it. It feels so good to see God's activity. And there's a joy that, that comes up inside of us. That's the light and life, the love of God bursting in us because we see him and we're with him because of what we hear in somebody else's life. Definition of joy, a feeling of great pleasure and happiness, the emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. I wrote in delight. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. What joy to have all of him. There's a lot that gets in the way, but it's not him. Hmm. I know, I'll go back to it. <laughs> when I was little, just... When I was really young, about that, that little, um, I used to anticipate, no, it didn't matter what, I, what the, my track record was, was getting gifts that I didn't ask for. I always asked, I always hoped for uh, certain gifts, and I, uh, and I love presents. That's just my love language, is, is gifts or presents. You can give me a rock, wrap it up, and I'm like, oh boy, thank you. <laughs> That's just the way I'm wired. And so when I was young, I remember this one particular Christmas, there was a box and it had my name on it. It was under the, the Christmas tree and I was looking forward to opening it up. It was wrapped so nicely in the best wrapping paper. It looked like it was something really good and I imagined it being the toy that I was asking for. And it was kind of heavy too. And I, I, I was like, man, this, I can't wait. So I didn't wait. Being a sly, stinky person that I was, impatient i would go down there every night i would undo the tape just a little bit just a little bit i thought to myself i'm gonna see what this is before christmas day for some reason that seemed like a good goal and so one until so finally just a few days before christmas i did it i undid the wrapping without any trace i would make a great spy i think <laughs> or just a, a thief uh, anyway i opened it up and what did I see? Rustler jeans. <laughs> Rustler jeans. Now, if you're young, you don't get it. You don't get it. Like back in my day, in the 80s, cool meant something. And, and, and cool was attached to brand and, and, and how you, and the jeans that you wore. You had to have 501 jeans or nothing. And if you had rustler jeans, going to school in rustler jeans, just, just pack it up. Just don't do it. Call, call. I had, so I had three days before Christmas of dread of how am I supposed to look happy? How do I manufacture happiness for a happy look? And if you guys know me, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. But I was just, the whole time I was like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Christmas isn't about rustler jeans at all. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> just part of my process. Thank you. Thank you for being a safe place for me. <laughs> I say that because my attention all the, to the whole time leading up to Christmas was on getting what I ha hoped to get. And when I didn't get it, even before Christmas, I was living in a dark space, right? It just robbed the Christmas joy. Okay, let's look at, um, <laughs> let's look at uh, Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, 
where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Holly, I'll let you go ahead and take over here. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is a child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would, do, would fulfill his promise to her. And I'll stop just right there. You see the, the emotion, the joy coming up. Seeing and hearing about Jesus, joy. Believing that what God said he would do would happen. Believing it, that produces joy. You know, when we're in dark places, depressed, discouraged, we have been, get, we've been looking at and paying attention to things naturally that make us think, a good, think that a good outcome isn't going to happen. Or we're living in the negative hap, outcome that has already happened, and we're staying there. When we believe what God can do, what he will do, what he, and we look at what he has already done, we start attaching our, ourselves to a greater reality where there is joy, the life and, and light of Jesus Christ. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Oh, I did double... Okay. He has helped the servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. So we read that when Mary was hearing the messages, hearing the message from the angel telling her what was going to happen, visiting her cousin Elizabeth, seeing what God was doing in her life, and seeing the testimony of, of the miracle that God was giving to, to her cousin. And she's wrapped up in what God is doing in her life. Even though she's in a humble state, not, see, not valued or seen as very high esteemed in that society. But she sees that God sees her. And she has heard from her. And she sees that God is working in other people's lives. People's lives that they thought, who thought they could never have a baby. That, that were shunned and, and looked down upon because they weren't, weren't ever able to have kids. So in that, in that day and age, if that was the case, you would be seen as somebody who did something wrong or is displeasing to God. But here she is seen, wrapped up in what God is doing in his favor on those who are humbled. And what does she do? She's filled with joy and starts expressing out loud who God is. Isn't that the case when we're filled with God's joy, when we're in his presence, we're actually believing him and we're seeing what he's doing. It's really easy to speak of who he is. And we just start expressing out loud. And sometimes when we're in dark places, especially in comparison to the expectation of the light of Christmas, we need to just to say out loud, proclaim what he has done and who he is and what he is going to do. Write it down and say it out loud, share it with others. And then light starts to fill that place. Luke chapter 1, 67 through 79 his father, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he has said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Amen. Let the scripture speak for itself, right? 
Here's the joy of Christmas. This is like the joy to the world moment. Light that's coming into the world. Forgiveness is available. God is redeeming all of our hardships. And I love how Zechariah at the beginning says, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He's speaking in the present tense of what is about to happen. Praise God because he's redeeming us. He's forgiving us. He's shining his light into every space of our lives that we may not see that light yet, but he's doing it. Praise him because we have hope, real hope. The celebration of Christmas includes seeing that God came to be with us so that we never, ever, ever, ever have to be without him. There's never a circumstance of difficulty where we will be without him. And that is real light. That is real love. That is real, true life, the light of Jesus Christ. And I know it's difficult. I know the expectations are difficult. The circumstances are very difficult. The last few years, last year was a, a blessing for us as we merged onto the family uh, at Lighthouse. I can't believe it's only been a year. It's actually been a year exactly the first time I uh, started preaching here. Thank you for the, for, for the welcome. And um, no, I didn't want an applause. No, no, no. But uh, <laughs> no, I, really, I really didn't expect that. But the previous years, <clears throat> excuse me, before that were di very difficult. Because the previous five years, more like seven to eight years, uh, things changed in my family dramatically, where my mom got Alzheimer's. And it's a degenerative condition. The first couple of, um, of Christmases, she was included and, and a part of it. But year after year, it became more and more difficult. And there was a subtle loss of family tradition, of family ways, of tensions built up. It was very difficult to be with her or to know that she was with us. Eventually, she needed to go into a care home. And this whole idea of with was much more difficult. But my mom and I shared faith in Jesus. She lit up the house. Where nobody else wanted to be a part of that or understood that, she did. In fact, it was her prayers that got me into the kingdom of God. When I was pushing her away, she was praying me in. Out of sight, she didn't know it, but for three years, when she was struggling on her knees, God was working in my life. Praise God, because Jesus came. So I would go visit her, and my family would go visit her. And we'd no longer be able to interact the same, but I knew she knew Jesus. You know what's awesome about Jesus? He's never in the past. He's always with. So even though she has Alzheimer's, she didn't have to remember him. So when I brought him up and I started singing Christmas songs with her in her room, with her roommate, we were worshiping Jesus together. That's the love and the joy of God. That's the real life and the real celebration of Christmas. That there's nothing, nothing, nothing that can get between us and him. Because Jesus came to us. It's not up to, it's not up, to us to get to him. She eventually passed away. But we did share Christmas together. There were several years where she couldn't interact. But we sat next to each other and we worshiped Jesus together. Praise God. That's real life. That's the real stuff. Shortly after she passed, my dad's condition declined, and he too got dementia, and he had to live in a care home. And then COVID hit, and nobody was allowed to see them. I hate that. To me, that's darkness. To literally be legally removed. I was like, no. One of the most precious times was 2019. My boys went to go see him, and I. They went with me. They're young. Couldn't drive themselves. <laughs> and we go into his room and we're sharing gifts that they wanted to give to him as a special exchange he had already had dementia so the, the interaction was limited but real and sincere and we even sang a song in there and, and afterwards it, but we were with him right afterwards we go out and my oldest boy David who has just such a, had such a heart for uh, my dad beautiful was sad at the condition that he saw him in. So we went off and we walked into a field together, the field next, there, next uh, to the care home, and we talked about that. 
and we prayed about it, and we talked about it. And then we started to have fun and play around and talk about it. So even in the darkness right there, and even with my young son, both of them, we were able to celebrate Christmas, and it was meaningful. Why did this have to happen? And as COVID hit, and I couldn't be with my dad, I was asking God, why does it have to be this way? But even then, we could celebrate Christmas. Because you know what? No one is outside of the presence of God. So I prayed for my father. Robert and I prayed for him. Our boys prayed with, for him. And we were with him. And we knew that God was with him. The real meaning of Christmas is God with us. So what a great gift to pray from a distance. It doesn't matter where we are in the universe. We could pray for somebody to know that God is with them, to be with them. What a great gift to spread in our families and our communities just to pray that they would be with Jesus too, that we would be with them. You want to celebrate Christmas this year? You want a real celebration? Bring with God into every circumstance, every, every marketplace, into your family. Doesn't matter how, what someone's mental capabilities are or not. Pray for God to be with them, for them to be with Jesus. Amen. Applications for joy. Plan for a with God Christmas. Just be with him. Be with people. And our, and our sadness and our loneliness sometimes, and our loneliness when we really want to be with people, sometimes it makes us want to isolate. Isn't that weird? Be with your heavenly father through Jesus. Create opportunities to see God for yourself and others. Plan to give to those around you in every area of life. Proclaim who Jesus is and what God has done. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Proclaim what he has done. I'm going to finish with just an attempt to stimulate your own praise for him. Just like when Zechariah and Mary got caught up in the presence of God and seeing what he was doing, they just started praising him in a song, in a, in a psalm. Look at what God has done. We've been brought together because of, because of Jesus' birth. We've been brought together and will forever have family with one another. Every dreadful thing we've ever experienced can be redeemed because light shines in every dark place. He's working in us right now and our families and our loved ones. He's building us up and he has built us up. He rules over the nations, and he rules over every dark force that would try to harm us. He has a plan. He loves us, and he has a plan. And he loves the ones that we love. He knows us, and he has made himself known. He satisfies us, and he always will. He is holy, and he is mighty. We have Jesus as our Lord, and he has us. We have love. We have light. And we have the love and life and light of God in us because of Jesus forever and ever and ever. And I'll close with Romans chapter 15. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know we're here because of you. We're here because you came to us. And you've done it all. Thank you, Lord, that we could be with you. I pray for each one of my brothers and sisters here, including myself, that this Christmas season, we would not get lost in expectations and the burdens of making things the way we think they should be. But instead, will you guide us into time with you, space with you? Will you invade our homes? We ask you to invade our homes, invade our families, invade the people that we're with, the spaces that we share with them. We love you, Lord, and we want to worship you and you alone. And with eyes closed and heads bowed, if you need to come to Jesus for the first time to receive the light of God, the light of life, Pray with me right now if you need Jesus in your life. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that on the cross, you died and paid 
the penalty of sin on my behalf. I believe in faith that you give me your life in exchange for mine. And I choose to walk with you and live with you the rest of my days by your grace and with your help. If this has been your prayer, whether of rededication or first, first time, will you raise your hand that I could pray for you? Pray with you. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lord, for these hands raised and those unseen, you know them, Lord. I pray that this morning you make yourself known and explode in them as a burst of light and joy. And I pray this for all of us, Lord, that we would leave here with a burst of your joy through you, Holy Spirit. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for a final worship song? One of those days. One, two, three, four, five, six.
song to close with. Go in God's grace and peace and shine his light to everyone. Amen? Mm -hmm. And help yourselves to all the refreshments. <laughs>